Okay, so everyone knows Tesla has been the leader and innovator in electric vehicles. Um, not only in electric vehicles, but also their supercharging network. Now with many more EVs coming to market, the difficult part is where do they charge? Many of my friends and people that I know have other EVs, but their difficulty lies in where to charge. That's up until now. Tesla is officially opening up their supercharging network to all EVs all across the United States. And this is through a partnership with the government and President Biden on funding and helping promote the electrification of the United States and the world. Now, how is Tesla actually gonna do this? We're gonna look at one of the first superchargers that is outfitted to charge any electric vehicles today and see how it charges my Model 3 and a non-Tesla EV, a Rivian R1T. Let's take a look. Okay, so we're in Scotts Valley, California, right near Santa Cruz, and this is one of the first Tesla superchargers to be outfitted with this new Magic Dock. You'll notice that the supercharger looks essentially exactly the same as any other supercharger, but there is a giant dock up here, and this contains the CCS adapter to help other non-Tesla EVs charge at this. So if you're a Tesla owner, it's still the same experience of pressing the button, removing the charger and plugging into charge. Here, let's charge my Model 3, let's see. Now this charger is capable of 250 kilowatts. I'm here with a state of charge of 34 miles remaining. And that's 12%. So I'm at a state of charge of 12%, and right now you can see it climbing. I'm at 600 miles per hour. I'm at 150 kilowatts. It's still climbing. Ideally, we should see 250 kilowatts and 1,000 miles an hour supercharging. You can see it's still continuing to climb. 900 and 1,000. 1,000 miles per hour, um, more than 1,000, 254 kilowatts, and it's charging just like the experience would be anytime. Okay, now uh, the Tesla supercharger, this is just one example, but the Tesla supercharging network is enormous and all over the United States. So it's really impactful that now this is going to become available to all electric vehicles, furthering the electrification and just going by by Tesla's mission to further accelerate the transition to electric vehicles, more owners with more places to charge. Now, not every supercharger is gonna be outfitted with the Magic Dock, but through Tesla and the government, there's gonna be about 7,500 locations that will be outfitted with this dock. Today, we're looking at one. Pretty soon in months, we're gonna see many more like this. So you're gonna be seeing some neighbors of other EVs parking right next to you charging. Now, let's roll in the Rivian and see how it charges, how you get it to charge, and what the pricing looks like. So in the app, when you click on your profile, you go to non-Tesla EV, and you're gonna be presented with all the chargers. You select the charger that you're at. So in this case, we're at the Scotts Valley location. Um, here's where you can put in your payment information and so forth, but you also select which stall number you're at, and that can be found at the bottom of the charger. So here we selected 4C, the stall number, um, and then you'll hear a click that unlocks the magic dock, and then you just go ahead and plug it into your non-Tesla EV. Once you do, you're gonna see it start to charge and it'll appear on your phone. It takes about a minute to show in the Tesla app that it has begun charging and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and see just how fast and what the charging uh, speeds are that we're gonna get on this Rivian. One thing to note, even for non-Tesla EVs, is that idle fees do apply at superchargers. So make sure you're monitoring and you unplug it on time. Otherwise, expect a high bill. Now, as far as a payments for this charging session, there are two options. You can go pay as you go, which gives you access to the network, but it's not the lowest per kilowatt 
rate. Now, that rate is going to vary depending on what charger you go to. But if you subscribe to Tesla's membership for this, which comes in at $12.99 per month, you'll not only get access, but you'll also get the lowest price uh, per kilowatt rate. Special shout out to uh, Brandon over on Twitter who put together this chart, which actually breaks down some of the locations, actually all of the locations that are live today uh, in New York and in California. Here you'll see in Scotts Valley where we're charging, it's 52 cents a kilowatt. Now, if you have a membership, that comes out to 42 cents a kilowatt. So a good 10 cents savings there. Um, so you're getting about a 20% discount for having the membership. Um, you'll need to charge 129 kilowatts um, needed to just break even for your membership costs, which uh, doesn't seem too crazy. Uh, so special shout out to Brandon for putting together this chart, but it really kind of gives you a look here that with the membership, you're saving on average about 20% for your uh, charging rate. And as these chargers begin to grow across the US, the membership is gonna prove to be really, really worth it. So you can see here, we're pulling in about 142 kilowatts. What was our state of charge? 27%. So still 142 only. So we should be pulling in 250, 220. but we're not. So maybe we have to be lower, I don't know. Tim was sweating on the way up here, blasting the heater, trying to drain the, uh, the heat. So, but hey, either way, it works. Okay, so the Rivian came in at 29% state of charge and it was pulling about 150 kilowatts. So not bad, but it's capable of pulling more. It's probably because it wasn't as low of a state of charge. Now, what's the experience like on the Tesla app? Because you will need to download the Tesla app to charge your non-Tesla EV here. So let's take a look. Okay, so the Tesla app, once you've downloaded it and created an account, you're gonna click on the account here on the top right, and you're gonna scroll all the way over, you're gonna see non-Tesla charging. And you'll see right now it says in progress, but that's also what you're gonna use to start charging. Right now it shows you how much it's costing you to charge, what your charging level is, um, it also shows you how many kilowatts, you'll see right now we've reduced down to 123 kilowatts, um, and then you could say stop charging, and it also gives you some details on how to stop charging, and more details on how exactly the Magic Dock works, how it unlocks, and how to select which uh, post number and which charger you're gonna be charging at. So pretty simple, but yet intuitive. It is another app that you're gonna need to have on your phone if you're a non-Tesla EV with your other uh, apps that you'll have on there as well. Okay, so we saw how a Tesla charges, obviously not much different. And then we saw how the Rivian R1T charged. And believe it or not, not only is a Rivian charging here, we've got a Bolt over there, a Ford F-150 Lightning, everyone, all EVs are now welcome in one ecosystem under Tesla, the supercharger to rule them all. Now, why was Tesla chosen? It's because of their, their upkeep, their uptime, which is a requirement by Biden and his administration for superchargers. So I'm curious to know, what do you think about this transition? If you're a Tesla owner, are you happy about your new neighbors? And if you're not, are you happy about more charging that's more reliable and more available? Let me know down in the comments, what are you seeing? And also, do you have one of these magic docks near you? I'm curious how many more are there out there? Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the video. See ya.